clear. No sign of Legion yet. Right. Listen up. Valorant is a competitive 5v5 tactical shooter. It shipped on PC in most of the world in June of 2020. It shipped in China in mid-2023, and to players on Xbox Series S, X, and PlayStation 5 consoles in August of 2024. Since that initial release, we've been shipping a patch to players roughly every two weeks. You ready? Yeah, I got this. So the engine upgrade really what we're looking for there are how can we upgrade all of the tools that our development team is using every day so that we can build more for our players. From a developer perspective, we're a live game. We're not able to take advantage of some of the banner features like Nanite and Lumen. We really prioritize clarity of the read in our gameplay as well as really high performance across a wide swath of hardware. But there's still a ton of stuff in the engine that we just get value from day to day features around efficiency and iteration time. So technology like Zen Server or capabilities like multi-process cook, we expect to really speed up some of our build times. We're still on a build system of our own. We're interested in evaluating Horde and seeing if that can bring us more into the broader ecosystem of the way Unreal games get built in 2025. There's a bunch of tooling stuff that we're excited about. We actually internally built a set of profiling tools years ago at this point. Unreal Insights is quite a bit more powerful than what we've built, so we're pretty excited to get to deprecate some of that legacy technology and just use the latest and greatest from Epic. The UMG View model has a bunch of data binding code that we've had to build ourselves. We're looking forward to sunsetting that. That will help us build UI faster. There's some stuff that we're interested in from a performance angle. Zen Loader and Oodle, we think, will help with our load times. We're very interested in how Iris continues to evolve and whether that makes sense for us in terms of optimizing the game server further. We're interested in potentially using game feature plugins to change the way that we lay out a bunch of our content, just be able to more easily include and exclude things from the game. And then finally, just generally working in the UE5 editor is quite a bit more pleasant than working in the UE4 editor. Across all of these things, we're really looking for what can we do to speed up our development team to be able to operate more effectively. And then from a player perspective, we will use those tools to build new things, but we don't want them to perceive any difference day to day as we go from UE4 to UE5. So when we do an engine upgrade, it's really important to us that the game continues to perform exactly the same and just as well as it did before the upgrade. That's true across clients, servers, consoles, all of our different platforms. Typically, we're looking at the release notes, everything that's coming out. We're talking to other teams at Riot that have experience with more recent versions of Unreal. We're looking at what are the things in our workflow that we specifically know Epic is investing in that we can potentially improve upon, then deciding when it makes sense for us to upgrade and move on to the next version. So as a live game, there are a few different dimensions that we think about when taking an engine upgrade. We are shipping a new version of the game to players roughly every two weeks, and it takes us longer than two weeks to do an engine upgrade. So mechanically, we take our main line, we create a Perforce branch where we're gonna do all of the integration work, we merge in engine sources, we fix all of the merge conflicts, fix all the compile breaks, fix all the bugs that we've created along the way, and just generally try and get into a state where we feel pretty good about the state of the game. Once we're there, we start bringing developers working on far future content into our integration branch where they will start doing some of their daily work and really help us beat up some of the editor scenarios and things that are not player facing. When everything is at the bar, we take that branch, we reverse integrate it back into our main line, then it ships to players as part of our next regular release. With UE5, we kind of had a notable challenge around the physics engine changing and moving to chaos. Chaos changed some of our gameplay behaviors and we really didn't want any of that to reach players. And so we built out a bunch of automation that will go and record the way that gameplay behaviors behave on every tick of our movement timeline. So we, we have a 128 tick rate server, 128 movement updates per second. At every one of those updates, we can record the game state around an ability in UE4, record it in UE5, compare the result, and where there are differences, we could create bugs and then go and fix those bugs and make sure that it behaved the same both before and after the upgrade. 
The final thing that is kind of interesting about the engine upgrade is it creates a moment in time where there's a good opportunity to take a look at some of the core systems of the game and where we might want to be making improvements. Typically with a live game, those opportunities are rare because validation is just prohibitively expensive. So as part of the UE5 upgrade effort, we went and we looked up and down the stack with a performance lens on everything we're doing in the engine, everything we're doing in the game layer, and we found some like pretty big improvements that were a little bit risky. We were able to validate those as part of the engine upgrade. The ones that didn't work, we had to pull out. The ones that did work, we're gonna ship to players. And as a result, we think with the UE5 build of the game, most player PCs are gonna see a small performance upgrade versus the current version of the game that's in the live environment. For Valorant, just play Valorant.com, go download the game and come join us, it's a fun time.